Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you don't already know me, my name is Marcus and I am a prospective medical student for the next year starting in October 2020, looking to study in Cambridge University. And you can check out my video about the medical school journey I took in order to get that offer up here. So today I'm gonna to be talking to you about verbal reasoning for the UCAT. And this was by far my worst section. I got 610 in this section. And I think the average for the section was about 550. So it was by no means an extraordinary score. And I'm just gonna talk you through a bit of what I did right and what I did wrong and how I feel you can learn off my mistakes and how you could really boost your grade just by listening to what I have to say. So let's dive right into it. Now the main issue I had with this section was the timing where I just didn't have enough time to do all the questions and I was very time pressured. And I feel like this was because of a lack of practice, but also because that's just how it's made. And this section you have less than two minutes per text, which is very tough. And the timing is very hard to manage for this section. So I'm gonna go through with you step by step into how you should approach each text in order to make it as fast as possible while also maintaining the integrity of the text and making sure that you're answering the marks effectively. So the first step is to skim the text. So to skim really effectively is very tough and it can take years and years of practice and people who skim effectively are just, it, it, it's not easy is basically what I'm saying. Being able to take in a huge amount of information really really quickly is a skill which it's hard and Doing it really well is tough. However, I didn't say you needed to do it well. I just said you needed to do it. Now the main point of skimming is that you go through it and you take in the main topic or main topics for each of the paragraphs and you try to understand what the whole text is about. Because once you do this, you'll actually understand what you're reading and the questions you read after just won't be a bunch of baloney to you. You really don't need to try to memorize any figures or any facts by this stage because unless you have a photographic memory, then doing this while skimming is basically impossible and there's just no point to it. You'll just be wasting your time. So step two is to mentally map out the different topics that are within each section. So think about, okay, paragraph one is sort of talking about this, paragraph two is about this, paragraph three is about this, and finally paragraph four is about this. And sort of just understand where everything fits together and how the whole text is structured and how it like merges so that when you do come to do the questions, you'll know where you have to refer back to to answer that question. Now doing this step is a bit tough at first because mentally visualizing everything in an instant is not easy, but this just takes a lot of practice and once you get the hang of it, it isn't too bad. I say that while I get 610. So step three is to read the question. Now you have to do this really attentively and really focus on reading the question properly. Because if you don't read the question properly, then you may miss out things and you just won't understand the question, then you have to reread it and stuff, and that will just waste more time. So what you have to do is just read it really focused and take your time with reading the question because that's basically the most important part. If you immediately know the answer to the question after having skimmed it, or for example, if it's the fourth question and you're sort of already more familiar with the text, then you can just answer straight away and you don't even have to refer back to the text because you can just save time like that. However, most cases you won't know the answer immediately. And this leads me on to the final fourth step, which is, which is to read through the answers of multiple choice. So read through the answers, quickly commit them to memory, and go back to the text to where you think the answer may be. So since you've already skimmed it and you sort of know where everything fits together, you kind of know where the answer to the question is gonna be within the text. So then you can go back to the text and you, re you can read that little section and you can find the exact answer to that question and you can relate it back to the multiple choice option and you can answer the question. Don't try to read the whole text again or do whatever or like go back and forth and stuff. Just make sure you keep it as straightforward as possible because the less complication you have in between reading the questions and reading the text, the faster it will go and the less time you will waste just thinking about things and stuff, which is what I did a lot of and that ultimately lost me a bunch of marks at the end. Okay, so that's the main framework I believe you should be taking when actually doing the exam but there are some other tips which I can give you about the verbal reasoning, which I believe you can really value from. So the first tip is when you don't have the answer to a question. Now with the UCAT, I would typically tell you to make use of the flagging system and flag a question you don't know and come back to it later and stuff. However, this can't really be done with verbal reasoning because you just don't have enough time to be 
doing all the questions and then going back to all of your flagged ones and doing them because it's just not feasible. Therefore, I would suggest while you're doing step four of the previous part, which I explained where you read the questions, I would go to the text and do everything the same. And if you see anything which is more familiar, just feels right to you in the options for your multiple choice, then put that down and just go with your gut and try to make just basically an educated guess because that's all you can do at that moment because it is so tough to just try to think about it and go back to the text and stuff because you're just going to lose a bunch of time and that might lose you a few marks further on along the test. Then once you've made your educated guess, you can flag it anyway because there's no harm in that. If you do have time at the end, then you might be able to even go back to it and see if you made the right answer, but typically you won't actually use that flag. So my second tip, lo and behold, is to watch the time. Who would have guessed it? So since the verbal reasoning is typically set up in four questions for each text, four questions for each text, yeah, you should also be sort of timing yourself or organizing your time slots um, in fours so that you can have a time goal for each tiny little section of four questions because splitting that up per question just doesn't really work. So here, I would recommend when doing your practice, aiming for about 1 minute 30 per set of four questions. Now this is slightly faster than you actually need to go, but this is a good thing and let me explain to you why. If you start off the exam with a speed of 130 and further on you will get tired and you will go slower. And if you have that buffer of a faster speed at the beginning, then you don't need to be so worried and so stressed out at the end, which is what happened to me. I went far too slowly at the beginning. I was doing about one minute 50 per set, and then by the end, I just didn't have enough time. So here I would say really watch the time, particularly when you're practicing, and make sure you stick to that strict one minute 30 per set of four questions. So my third tip is pretty obvious, which is to just practice, 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 practice. That is the most important important thing because the questions aren't hard. It's not like the texts are overly complicated or the questions are really, really weird. It's not like that. It's just lots of questions which you need to do with the perfect amount of attention to detail. And that's the most important. If you just practice and do loads of papers and you do loads of individual questions of verbal reasoning, I would suggest using Medify for this. I used the Medic portal and it wasn't great because the texts were a bit shorter and it wasn't that realistic. I feel like Medify could probably do a better job. And practicing just allows you to really build up your speed while doing this and make sure that you can get a really good grade. Verbal reasoning, I think, is the hardest one to improve in because all of the other ones are sort of unfamiliar at the beginning and once you practice a bit, you can improve by huge amounts. Whereas verbal reasoning, you need far more practice and far more just doing a bunch of tests to actually get that muscle memory in of your brain. Does your brain have muscle memory? Is that a thing? Isn't that just memory? Basically, to just make sure that you're completely comfortable with doing questions and you can go as fast as you want. Ultimately, that is where I lost all my marks and I don't want you guys to lose all your marks doing that. So my final tip is to prepare for anything. Anything can happen in this exam. The people who are doing the UCAT this year, so 2020, you have the option to do it at home. I would highly recommend for you to do it at home. Because when I did it, I went to a tiny little test center where I sat in a tiny little room uh, with another person there doing another exam. And they gave me these really tight headphones which were supposed to cancel out noise, although there was construction and it did nothing. There was this tiny little computer screen which was horrible. By the end, I had very little time, so I decided I needed to start guessing. I tried to guess for a question, which I didn't even read the text, I just selected a random one, and it didn't let me. It gave me some error message, and I had 15 minutes left, and I was like, what, what the hell is going on? So I read the error message, and it says, I need to scroll all the way down, because the screen was too small, I needed to scroll all the way down to the end of the text for me to answer the question. By the time I had read the error message and selected it, and clicked on the next question, the exam finished. So I think I missed out on three questions at the end. So if this video provided you with any value, then please consider dropping a thumbs up and subscribing. It's free and you can always unsubscribe whenever you want to. That's all from me and I'll see you next time.